Hello everyone, today I am back doing another video in the Coding for Kids in Python series. This is the sixth video in the series and I am super excited to share with you guys some amazing coding concepts and techniques. Well, in my previous um, video in this series for coding for kids in Python, I showed you this new tool and it's um, called Google Collab. And in that video, I shared with you some amazing things that you can do on it, such as math operations and print functions. Well, um, I also shared with you guys in that video some really fun activities you guys can do on your own. And if you have any um, questions based on the, um, the Google Collab or all my coding videos in general, then please feel free to ask me. And thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel because now I have over 1,000 subscribers. Woohoo! So the sad thing is, is that all my comments have been disabled. But don't worry, because if you have questions, you can go on my social channels, which are Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and ask me all your questions there. So it, anyway, in today's video, I'll be sh we will be all talking about numbers. Yep, that's right. We'll be doing math in coding. And I think this is one of my favorite chapters in this book, because you can have the computer solve math problems for you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we will learn what are some of the most used numeric data types and also the simple arithmetic operators in Python. We will see how Python also follows the order of operations. I am sure you guys know about PEMDAS. If not, hang in tight and I'll be explaining that in this video. Later in this video, we will do some simple math operations in Python and also use simple logical operators like greater than, less than, and equal to, and many, many more. Well, let us pick up with some pace with this video. I will complete the entire chapter three of the book written by Mrs. Adrian Take in this video. So be sure to watch it multiple times until you get comfortable using the different arithmetic operators I'm going to explain. I would highly recommend you to practice coding along with me in this video so it'll be much easier for you to learn and remember how to use the programming environment. In Python, we will mainly deal with two main numeric types, which are integers and floats. Floats are numbers that can have whole and fractional parts written using decimal points. Integers are whole numbers that can be positive or negative. For example, I can define a variable called my underscore GPA and give it a value of 3.47. Well, now if I check the type of my variable by saying type open parentheses my GPA close, it will show it as a float variable. Well, similarly, we can check the type of an integer variable as well. Well, how about my underscore score equals 300? And then we could write type open my score close and enter. And now let's look at some arithmetic operators in Python. For this, I will go ahead and define two variables. How about a equals six and b equals three? Well, we can perform all sorts of math operations on these two variables. Like we can do some addition like a plus b and also a minus b. You can also do a times b, a divided by b, and also a modulus b, which means it divides a by b and returns the remainder. We can also do a floor divide b. This means it divides a by b and returns the answer rounded to the next smallest whole number. And then we can also do a exponent of b, which means to raise a to the power of b. Well, now that we have seen all the arithmetic operators in action, Let's look at the order of operations. Sometimes it's hard to remember the proper order, and that's why we remember it by the acronym PEMDAS, which stands for P for parentheses, E for exponentiation, M for multiplication, 
D for division, A for addition, and S for subtraction. So next time we need help remembering the correct order, use PEMDAS to refresh your memory. Let's see this with the help of an example. How about a big one, like total equals 20 plus, open parentheses, 20 times 1.82, and close parentheses, and then minus 2.5, plus three exponent of two. And now, like I said, we have to use the order of operations. So we can write print total, and that gets us 62.9. Well, the next set of operators we use in Python are called comparison operators. They give us a back, they give us back a true or false answer, which is also known as a Boolean type. These are very important because they help us make decisions in our code. There are six main operators and they are pretty simple. So let's check them out. First, we have the greater than operator. So we can write like three is greater than seven. And this of course gives us back false because three is clearly not greater than seven. And then we also have um, the less than operator. So like three is less than seven and the computer, as you can see, returns true. And then there's also the greater than or equal to operator. So like four is greater than or equal to three. This also returns true, obviously, because if you try also three is greater than or equal to three, again, it returns true because it checks for either a greater than or equal to condition. And then there's the less than or equal to. So like one is less than or equal to three and the computer would return true. And similarly, there is eight is less than or equal to eight and it returns true as well. And then there is the equal to operator. So like 44 is equal to 22 and it would of course return false. But then if you write 21 is equal to 21, the computer would return true. Well, now let's try a tricky one here. What do you think will return when we type 10 is equal to open quotation, 10, close quotation. Well, if you guess false, then you are absolutely right. Well, if you guess true, then let me explain how the computer thinks while solving this. Human wants me to figure out this expression. Let's see, 10 is equal to open quotation, 10, close quotation. Ha, huh, that's a clever one. It is false. The value on the left is a number 10, which is an integer type. The value on the right is also 10, but it's a string type because of the quotes. This means the values aren't really the same. Sorry, human, but the answer is false. And then we also have the not equal to operator. So like three is not equal to four. And of course it would return true. So those are all the comparison operators that we use in Python. And I hope you all learned a lot from this video, just like I did when reading the book, Coding for Kids in Python, written by Mrs. Adrian Take. And in my next video, we will also be trying out some fun activities from this chapter using Google Collab. So I'm very excited for my next video in the series because I love using Google Collab, and I'm sure you do too. So please do stay tuned on NP Station to watch my upcoming video but sadly now you guys won't be able to get um, notifications whenever I publish a new video because my channel is targeted for kids so please follow me on my social channels to get regular updates bye everyone and see you later on NP station